Was the president in any way pushing a false narrative in that call with the Afghan president? I think it's pretty clear. Again, I'm not going to go into details of a private conversation. Weird. I, I noticed that uh, she had no problem speaking repeatedly about things like the Steele dossier for four years. Meanwhile, the Afghanistan situation continues to fall completely apart. Uh, it is a disaster area. But the good news is that the Biden administration, they, their, their arm has, has grown to three feet long so that they can really tap themselves on the back, pat themselves on the back, uh, stroke themselves in every way possible, tubin all over themselves. Uh, they, can, they can do all of these things now, physically. They've, they've pretzeled themselves in order to make all of this happen. Ron Klain, who is the shadow president for Joe Biden and who spends all day on Twitter retweeting things. I mean, he's basically like Trump on Twitter. He, uh, he, he said yesterday that the Afghan pullout was handled as well as humanly possible. It's easy to second guess, but let's just be clear. America was in this war for 20 years, and I think any effort to unwind that, any effort to bring our troops out, any effort to end our military presence yes. in Afghanistan was going to be filled with uh, heartbreaking scenes and difficulties. And I think uh, the Biden administration has managed that as well as it could be managed under the circumstances we were placed in. Um, the circumstances you placed yourselves in. It was handled as well as could be managed. And then Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, he came out and he said, this was historic. We're so good at this, man. We are so good at this. So a few things. One, this is not Dunkirk, okay? We're doing this under cover of night with the Nazis looking down at British troops and then a flotilla of small fishing boats being sent across the English Channel. This was planes going in and out of a runway under no fire. That's what this was. And you guys failing to facilitate that and getting American troops killed. That's what this was. Here was Lloyd Austin again. Just keep just keep stroking yourself, man. Just keep keep doing it. Now, we have just concluded the largest air evacuation of civilians in American history. It was heroic. It was historic. And I hope that all Americans will unite to thank our service members for their courage and their compassion. They were operating in an immensely dangerous and dynamic environment. But our troops were tireless, fearless, and selfless. And my, my favorite is when he says things like, this is the biggest evacuation in American history. Aren't we good at this? There wouldn't have been an evacuation necessary if you hadn't pursued an entirely garbage policy. By the way, when, when people say things like this is unprecedented, Dunkirk involved 340,000 troops being evacuated from the French coastline. So actually, this is actually, it's pretty well historically precedented. In the aftermath of the 1948 war establishing the state of Israel, some 800,000 people, their journeys from Arab lands to Israel, Jews who'd been expelled, that was facilitated, right? So no, large population, I mean, in, the, in the aftermath of the Saddam Hussein Kuwait war, there were huge population transfers that were facilitated. So no, this is not unprecedented. No, it's not particularly logistically impressive from the Secretary of Defense's perspective. And yes, our people on the ground are brave and heroic, but our leadership is just garbage all the way through. Meanwhile, I am uh, amazed at the spectacle of the Biden administration saying that, you know, people should have gotten out early. We were telling them they needed to get out earlier and then they didn't get out earlier. So if they got stuck, it's really their own fault. There's only one problem with that, which is that Joe Biden is a damned liar. You'll remember in July, he said the government was not going to fall. Now he's like, well, we were telling people back in March they should leave. Really? In July... You were saying the government wasn't going to fall. Not only that, in July, the president of the United States called up the, the then Afghan president, Ashraf Ghani, and some of the transcript has now been leaked. This was July 23rd. And he was telling Ghani to lie to everybody and say that everything was hunky-dory. How are you expecting people to take you seriously when you're actively encouraging the president of Afghanistan to lie about the situation being just fine? And there's only one reason that Joe Biden wanted that. The one reason that Joe Biden wanted that is to shore up his own domestic political failures. He didn't want people to know that things were collapsing that quickly because then everybody would have been like, whoa, maybe it was a bad idea to announce to your mortal enemy, the Taliban, what date you were going to leave, how you were going to leave, and then withdraw all air support. Here's what Biden said to Ghani. It's unbelievable. Remember, Donald Trump was impeached over a Ukraine phone call. There's some problems with that phone call. Nothing to me approaching the level of the president of the United States calling up the Afghan president, and telling him to overtly lie to the world about the military situation on the ground in Afghanistan. Here's what Biden said, quote, you know, I'm a moment late, but I mean it sincerely. Hey, look, 
I want to make it clear I'm not a military man any more than you are, but I have been meeting with our Pentagon folks and our national security people as you have been with ours and yours. And as you know, and as I need not tell you, the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things aren't going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there is a need, whether it is true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. There's a need to project a different picture. I mean, like, that's amazing. He's telling him overtly to lie. By the way, he also lied to him this way. He said, we're going to continue to make sure your air force is capable of continuing to fly and provide air support. This is what he told Ghani in July. Lie. He did not continue to provide air support. He, he withdrew all military contractors from the country. He said, in addition to that, we're going to continue to fight hard diplomatically, politically, economically. Make sure your government not only survives, but is sustained and grows because it is clearly in the interest of the, Af of the people of Afghanistan that you succeed and that you lead. I find you a brilliant and honorable man. But the perception is that things are falling apart. And uh, we need that perception to change. It's not about the reality on the ground changing. Ghani replied, said, Mr. President, we're facing a full scale invasion composed of Taliban, full Pakistani planning, logistical support, at least 10 to 15,000 international terrorists, predominantly Pakistanis thrown into this. So this so that dimension needs to be taken account of. He said what is crucial. Right, this is Ghani speaking to, to Biden. And right, this is a leaked transcript of a phone call that Biden will not be impeached over. What is crucial is that close air support. And if I could make a request, if your assistance, particularly to our Air Force, be front loaded, because what we need at this moment, there is a very heavy reliance on air power. We have prioritized that if it could be at all front loaded, we will greatly appreciate it. And so and, and Biden didn't do any of that. And then he said, look, close air support works only if there is a military strategy on the ground to support. So he overtly he said, we're going to give you the air support. And Ghana's like, OK, well, we'd like to see it. And he's like, well, you're not getting it. And then he says, well, why didn't people leave earlier? While well, I was encouraging the president of Afghanistan, what a, what, a, what a dishonest piece of work the president of the United States is. And so Jen Psaki was asked specifically about this pathetic phone call from the president of the United States urging the Afghan president to lie to the general public while withdrawing close air support. And, uh, and she, of course, dodged the question. Now she'll circle back around. There's some reporting that we'd like to confirm regarding a, a call in, June, in July, rather, between President Biden and former Afghanistan President Ghani. Is that accurate? Can you tell us a little bit more about that call? Well, I'm not going to get into private diplomatic conversations or leaked transcripts of phone calls. Was the president in any way pushing a false narrative in that call with the Afghan president? I think it's pretty clear. Again, I'm not going to go into details of a private conversation. Oh, you're not going to go into details? It's not private anymore. It's right out there. Are you saying it's not true? Because we've seen it. So, so her play is, this thing that was, that, that was classified has now been leaked. The entire American public can see it. It's on the headline of every major newspaper in the world. I won't comment because it was classified. And now you've all read it. Weird. I, I noticed that uh, she had no problem speaking repeatedly about things like the Steele dossier for four years. Meanwhile, we are learning that a majority of Afghans who had worked for the U.S. military and applied for special immigrant visas had not been successfully evacuated and remained in Afghanistan. A senior State Department official said it appeared that a majority, a majority are still there. According to the senior official, I don't have an estimate for you on the number of SIVs and family members who are still there. I would say it's the majority of them, just based on anecdotal information about the populations we were able to support. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said that of about 31,000 people evacuated from Afghanistan to the United States between August 17th and August 31st, roughly 23,000 were Afghan allies and family members considered at risk by the Taliban. The effort was hampered by the unpredictable role of the Taliban stationed along routes into the airport, the official said. The Taliban cooperated in some cases, but in other cases blocked Afghan nationals from proceeding to the airport, according to the official. On Tuesday, based on the initial figures then available from the Pentagon, NBC News reported 8,500 Afghan allies had been evacuated. It was not clear if all of those 8,500 were applicants for SIVs or other expedited visas. On Wednesday, the Pentagon then released new figures, saying that about 20,000 Afghans had arrived at eight military bases in the United States. He said there were also another 40,000 Afghan evacuees, but did not provide a breakdown on how many of these people were actually screened. Who these people were? Were they SIVs? Were they translators? Basically, what happened is that at the very beginning, they just loaded people on planes and took them. They didn't screen any of them. That's that's probably what was happening at the very beginning. The reason I say this is because you could literally see the Afghans swarming the runway as all of this was happening. All of which has driven the Washington Post to correctly point out that this is a disaster area. They say this is, again, this is the Washington Post editorial board. Quote, this is a moral disaster. 
one attributable not to the actions of military and diplomatic personnel, but to mistakes strategic and tactical by Mr. Biden and his administration. Correct. The Biden administration says the Washington Post says they will not be forgotten. Plans already are being developed, officials say, for continued efforts to extract people. Nearly 100 nations issued a statement, etc. Any assurances by the Taliban clash with statements their spokesperson made during the crisis that the United States was wrongly inducing Afghans to leave. So even the Washington Post is like, yeah, this is just nonsense. By the way, U.S. citizens are still stranded there. They said no one told them to leave. According to the New York Post, a terrified American citizen who was an interpreter for the U.S. military has said she's now stranded in Afghanistan because nobody told her the last flights were leaving on Monday. The interpreter was using the pseud- a pseudonym for safety. She said, I just found out that the last U.S. troops left. I was just silent for a while. I can't believe no one told me this is the last, fl- the last flight. She says, they left us to whom? To those people who wanted to always kill us? It's heartbreaking. I still had hoped that we would leave. She said she repeatedly attempted to get through to mercy flights at Kabul, detailing how she was instructed to hold up an umbrella and shout out a code word, but nothing worked to get past the checkpoints and the thousands trying to flee. She says, if Americans couldn't help me when they were on the ground, what the hell do they expect to do now? She says that she is sheltering 37 people at her house, including 19 children, two of whom are disabled. So really, well done. It was a historic success. A historic success. Amazing. The State Department spokesperson, Ned Price, who is basically the Baghdad Bob of this operation, he says... You know, so he's asked, so you guys said that there would be other ways for Americans to escape. Are you aware of any Americans who have left since the uh, United States abandoned Afghanistan a couple of days ago? No answer. Did you have a number for, have any Americans gotten out since that last flight? I, I don't have, uh, I don't have data to provide on that front. Okay, now this is doing some pretty severe damage to Joe Biden as well it should. According to civics polls, right, so they have polls of presidential approval in every state. His approval rating has dropped by 11 points in Arizona, four in Colorado, 11 in Florida, 13 in Georgia, nine in Michigan, four in Minnesota, four in Nevada, seven in New Mexico, 12 in North Carolina, 12 in Pennsylvania, 25 in Texas, six in Virginia, and six in Wisconsin. Those are really bad numbers for the president of the United States. And heading into 2022, this looks like wipeout territory for the Democrats. So of course they are banking again on January 6th and the January 6th commission. I just don't think that dog is gonna hunt. There's only one group of people in power right now There is one man who made this decision. He sits at the head of the United States government. The decision is disastrous. The ramifications are horrific. And he's going to bear the brunt of the political firestorm that is to come, as well he should. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?